I think they should bring in the the, the writers and the po and the people behind the 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 Last of Us. Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Raul. This is DJ PJ. It's time. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Let's get into it. Okay. Yeah. I think what what mm. they're doing, uh, what they did, with adapting it from the video game, and if you have watched it. I think it's it's not only is it I want to say faithful. It's not gonna one hundred percent faithful. It's not a but it, it's faithful, but at the same time, it allows for room for creativity to um, be creative in that universe that, right. that that was created that was adapted. But it all works. I'm a happy camper, dude. It's such a good show. It's such an. I mean, I have I haven't seen the latest episode, but from what I've watched, it's just. It's it's crazy because it's like, and and I remember playing the game like briefly, but even then like I know that they expanded on like the whole, uh, thing with what was his name was it Frank Bill and Frank Bill and Frank they expanded on all that, and that was a beautiful episode regardless of what you think you know like regardless of what you think about the lifestyle or whatever, but, and maybe not even lifestyle you know what I mean. Uh, but like, if you're homophobic, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If, 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 regardless of whether you're homophobic or not, like uh, the reality is that it was a beautiful episode, you know, like it could be its own standalone. Right. Just that it could have been a movie. They told, what makes it so beautiful. they told so much in such a limited time. I think that's the thing that was impressive. Just like it felt like you watched like a two hour movie and they told the story beautifully. You didn't feel like you were missing anything. And it was still like a 40 minute episode, like an hour. Yeah, it was short. Yeah. It was one of the shorter episodes. So I haven't played the game at all. Yeah. And um, I have no point of reference. Like you're saying it's close to, but you know, not exactly. I haven't heard any fans say it's not faithful enough to the material. So we'll give them, you know, that star for being true. And based on what I'm getting, super impressed and that Bill and Frank episode is the type of thing you would leave for maybe episode seven or eight in the season. And I like a filler episode. Yeah, exactly. Quote. And I give them all the credit for no episode three. We're going to give you guys our Emmy contender. And right out the gate, you know, she's mentioned like, so is our Bill and Frank friendly? Well, Bill is, but not Frank or Frank, but not Bill. I don't remember. Um, and then right then and there, I'm like, all right, I don't know these characters. I haven't played the video game, but they kind of planted the ice, the seed of their identities. So right. when he shows up and he's in the hole and you're like, what's your name? I'm Frank. Oh, well, I'm Bill. I'm like, oh, that's what really? it is. So oh. when he's playing the piano, I'm like, oh, they're gay. Yeah. So it's they, like a second, it's a second it, thing. It's not the main thing. But no, like but a, what I'm saying, for me, it kind of unfolded. It like, yeah, the, I, the light bulb went off like a minute before they kiss. Well, the thing that's beautiful about it, and I'm I'm sure as a filmmaker, you will agree, and, and you please jump in, um, that a lot of times writing or filmmaking fails at actually showing the story as opposed to, you know, a lot of times people get caught up in like literally having the characters provide exposition yeah. Like verbally, like, oh, we're going to do this. And like, oh, the, you know, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of films get stuck in that when they should be showing. They should be using their medium to show and demonstrate. Like, like Avatar, you have that one character who's like, I'm here to tell you how your body works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, how do you how do you feel about that in regards to films and movies that, like, it, is that really, like, the powerful piece you think that one of the things that makes the show so much different and so much so effective no i i think so too i think it with, with all of what you guys said i think what also makes it so beautiful and and so is that it it, it, it appeals to universal themes right um but mm -hmm. it's with, within the story itself the larger story it's connected Right. So I think going back to what we were talking about, uh, like Ant-Man and like the Marvel MCU formula. Right. I think they can they can take a couple notes yeah. from how mm -hmm. they they're able to tell one story within a, a larger story and still connect it. Like they give you the pieces and it's all subtext. Like I said, how I was able to guess that they were going to be gay and have a 20 year relationship 
just off of her asking the question, mm -hmm. what's Bill and Frank like? So as soon as I learn their names, I already know that they're going to be around, you know, each other within 20 years from now. And so, yeah, it didn't say, hi, I'm Bill and I'm gay. Oh, I'm Frank and I'm gay too. Like you kind of figure it out as they figure out that they, you know, both feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it gives the audience the credit to watch and kind of play along, if you will. Yeah, I mean, that, that definitely felt a, a documentary style. Yeah. Right? yeah. You're letting it unfold before you. And you know, without they, being so like, oh yeah, we're gay. No, like you, you let it unfold before the camera. But what was very interesting too uh, within that episode is that in order to tell this story of, of a gay couple, and then the, and how beautiful this story is, you have to remove society around them yeah. in order to tell this story. Yeah, the two of them like, by literally, themselves. Yeah, yeah, it's right. like this That's beautiful it, romance. You have to isolate it enough to be able to just hone in on the human relationship exactly. as opposed to as opposed to having it be framed in the context of their They're homosexuality gay, isn't, yeah. as opposed to the actual just the love you can that let they felt yeah. for each other you have to the the let the monsters right like who are these right. monsters cuz like for example you look at like a movie like uh what was it i was going to say uh is it Breakback Mountain? Broke back. Broke back, sorry. Um, and that whole movie, even though it was a love story, it was still written in the context of the constraints of their gay relationship within the context of uh, uh, society and like society's misogyny within that time period, right? And so I, that point you made, dude. Yeah, just what blew you said about mind, universal bro. themes, like the the two daughters, the one that dies and the one that replaces, and like the the one that would have never, you know, been for that Armageddon world, and the one who fits right in, but is kind of like a sociopath, like you you know you don't have to raise a sociopathic daughter to be you know understand like. He's dealing with the trauma of losing a daughter and like having to take on another one. Right. Uh, so yeah, like the romantic partnership of Bill becoming a softer person to, you know, have someone to protect and Frank, you know, maybe toughening up a little bit and uh, dealing with this, you know, survivalist and having a say and not being a pushover. Like they both kind of evolve to fill in where each other miss out just like any couple might. Right. So by the time you get to the last day when he says, I've decided, and you know, the, the softer of the two is saying, no, I'm making the decision today. You know, we're doing what I want to do and we're going to, you know, do something nice. Right, right, right. <laughs> and you know, we're going to get married. We're going to put on nice suits and we're going to have a meal and then we're going to say goodbye. I cried like a freaking baby. Like it wasn't like I let it out. No, I just continuously cried from the moment he said, this is the last day until they sat down for the meal and started doing dialogue again. Like I just sat there completely memorized and that's what a, a good movie should do. And even though like the, the male kissing did make me feel a little uncomfortable to watch because they, you know, they're zoomed in right in front of, you know. Because it's intimate. It's supposed exactly. to be intimate, yeah, right? It's very it's intimate. Yeah. So I can get past the little feeling of uncomfortableness of watching it and then move on to just like going full in on accepting their love for each other. And, you know, it doesn't have to be your thing, you know? Right, right, right. And, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned that because I hadn't thought about it. But when when Frank takes control of his own, I guess, like destiny, right, it reminded me a lot of that position that or not position, but that situation where they initially met, uh, when they had that dinner with uh, Joel and uh, I forgot her name. Tess. Tess, where, where Frank didn't want to have that, but that time that we see Frank be really firm and really like demanding, like, no. We're having we're, company and we're gonna be polite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was kind of like that. So it was just kind of like that evolution of that, that dynamic. And then at the end of the day, seeing 
um, seeing Bill just kind of like, and both of them knowing that both of them are going to make that decision at the end of the day, you know, like, because even Frank was like, there's, you know, spoilers, but like, you know, there's, there's the, the pills are in the drink, right? Yeah. I was like, yeah. Like, it, and it, oh, yeah, when he chugs the wine, and you can like, already uh, tell, like, uh, and you knew, yeah. and you knew Bill wasn't gonna, like, yeah. abandon his mission had become to protect yeah. this, you know, softer man and to fall in love. And right. without him, you know, what's he gonna do? Just be a bitter piece of shit again? No, right? So, yeah, <sighs> definitely out of what we gave it, how many babosos? Three out of three babosos, three out of three, three, babosos. Out of three babosos, all banana slugs. All at least a foot long, right? Because banana slugs are pretty. Oh, long. I thought you meant Bill and Frank were packing. I mean, they could be. They got they, banana they slugs. Yeah. There's the a reason why they didn't show us what happened inside the room. That's I'm gonna start measuring, like, like you know, uh, how many banana slugs is your Johnson? <laughs> it's about one. All stupid. One baby banana slug. Oh. Uh. Uh, Go eat a thing. bag of no, baby thanks. banana slugs. <laughs> exactly, I was looking at that one too. <laughs> yeah, how many? Of, how many of those bad boys? One, two, three. But you know what's interesting about The Last of Us as well? The relationship that that uh, Joel and uh, Ellie Ellie have as well they're a the actors, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting to see. You know, it, it got me like. This is. I know this might be like a crazy jump because like I've seen interviews between them, and they seem so like you can see the respect that each of them have for each other, and um, the you know like the respect as an adult that uh, Pedro Pascal has for I forgot her name the actress's name Ellie. You know, and it's it, and it's like you can tell that he. Even with the the actress that played his daughter, you can tell that they that he kind of takes them under their wing. They post pictures of them all going out to lunch and just kind of having like a very mentor she mentorship like relationship, you know. And it got me thinking. I'm like, dude, it's kind of crazy that this Hollywood guy can have really positive relationships with his fellow coworkers who are young, obviously younger than him, 19 years old, whatever. And then on the other hand, you find out that freaking Leonardo DiCaprio's dating a 19 year old again. Like, come on, bro. Like. Hey man, it, like I, I like I get that you know sometimes you might be attractive to 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 women that are younger than you, you know, but like, like, consistently, constantly be attracted to like eighteen year old women and nineteen year old women and all that stuff. Like you don't on, think bro. maybe Pedro Pascal was taking him out to lunch uh, for other reasons? You think he's smashing? I mean, if it's legal, I, I mean, I wouldn't take it off the table. No, I'm just playing. But uh, no, I, I think. You hear about actors talking about their experiences on set and, you know, you bring a piece of yourself to the character mm -hmm. and then you leave the set having experienced those things. Even if you're just pretending, you're still going through the motion. So I could see, you know, if you're playing father and daughter with these two actresses, that you're kind of naturally fall into into that rhythm. Yeah, you're exactly. Not, you're not you're not looking at them the same. You're literally looking at them as your daughter a tiny bit, right? Because you've experienced that, you've lived it. Versus Leonardo DiCaprio is just trapped in a loop. Well, everyone, thank you for listening and watching. This has been Raul. DJ PJ. We hope to see you with us again. Come back for more. Just you know come back. Just come back. Like, subscribe, do all that.